know, they had a permit. Um, so it's just another risk that's out there. And so deferral, particularly in the stormwater utility, uh, that would be an implication. A question, if I may. Uh, I think you indicated that uh, in the past the sewer has not been paying for itself and the was to get it to pay for itself. How was it paid for before? How was the deficit in that? Water. The water utility. Okay. Anything coming out of the general fund going into these three utilities? No. Okay. Thank you. It, you could use general funds, but um, not the other way around. Yeah. Uh, but we do not. And I'm not aware that we ever have. Okay. So they've been self-supporting, if you would, together. But it, isn't it true that we did not allocate uh, some of our overhead costs accordingly, appropriately in past years to those funds? So it Some actually resources. increased the cost of running the water and sewer funds when we went to appropriate um, allocation of those overhead expenses. Some had to be backed out. Yeah. There was excess uh, subsidy. Yes. Exactly. Yes, I believe that was an audit. Uh, find a management letter. So I can't remember exactly when it was, but in the past, uh, the state auditor did not make a finding since it was a lesser uh, determination, but nonetheless serious and something we had to change that um, we were charging overhead to the utilities for general fund administration uh, too high of a percentage and that had to be backed out. One of the things that uh, Jennifer so they, does that constitute a general fund subsidy to the utilities? It was a utility subsidy to the general to fund, the which is inappropriate, which cannot be done. Gotcha. Right? So That'd be like paying for myself, <clears throat> the mayor, and the council, the finance department, HR, those types of general administrative functions. The overhead rate was determined to be too high in charging the utility funds. One of the things that Jennifer and her staff will be doing over the next few months is uh, uh, re-looking at our cost allocation plan, which is essentially how we charge out overhead, uh, and making sure that you know we've got that as robust as it needs to be and as accurate as it needs to be, and that could introduce some change into the system. Um, it could potentially add cost to the utilities. It could potentially back off costs, just as we kind of iterate that down as close as we can get it. The next uh, slide, RJ. Let me just oh, make I'm sorry. one comment on the moratorium. Um, there was a problem in Oregon. I think it was in Tualatin, but it may have been Sherwood as well. And it really is a problem because if you have a moratorium on new permits, that means you also have a moratorium on system development charges and impact fees which means that you get no help. All of the capital improvement costs have to come from the existing ratepayers, And that's, to put it mildly, very painful. So anybody who's, who's seen a growth moratorium doesn't want to see another one. That's all. At, our, at the last work session with FCS, uh, we presented um, the implications of a Washington Supreme Court case, uh, Lane versus the city of Seattle. I found out that that was, had to do with the electrical utility at the city of Seattle, but it had implications for all utilities. It had to do with street lights and who pays for them. Um, the implication is that, uh, to date, all of us as ratepayers in the community for our water service have been paying for our fire hydrants, maintenance of the fire hydrants, upsizing pipes to make sure we can provide fire protection, capacity and reservoirs for fire protection, things that aren't really necessary for health, for, for potable water, and for fire safety. Those, that incremental portion of the cost cannot be borne by uh, the ratepayers and it must be borne by uh, the general fund. And so RJ is just going to talk about um, what has become the uh, preferred method in municipalities in Washington for meeting this legal requirement.
Thank you. I think you actually covered most of it. Did I? Um, <laughs> um, <I'm sorry. laughs> so the, uh, so I'll go over the numbers that, that FCS has updated for us. Uh, the original presentation they had for total protection related costs was around 150, uh, I want to say 153,000. Uh, through some more analysis and looking at the actual fire hydrants throughout the city and coming up that number and looking at cost replacement, that number is actually closer to 256,000. Um, that constitutes about 10.4% increase in the utility costs. Uh, what this what this would mean, and in part is one one of the um, agenda bills in here is to increase our uh, utility tax, which is which is the acceptable legal requirement to do to to increase that from 10% to 20.4% um, to to cover that increase in rates. This would not have a direct impact to the rate payer, um, it would just be a um, increase on the utility tax uh, on the gross receipts of the utility itself. So on that, I don't have, if there's any questions. And that's the key point, just to make, to reiterate that understanding. Um, doing this doesn't change anyone's water bill beyond our rate recommendation, because we don't itemize the tax on a per customer basis. It's embedded in the rate, and we tax ourselves as a utility purveyor at the end of the year, a big lump sum. So it just means that um, more money will go from the utilities over to the general fund to do the same things that the t utility used to do itself. So it's just moving a shell from one side to the other, but it has no implication in terms of impact to the rate payer. They will continue. It's not a change to them. FCS t does talk about in their um, rate study too. They have four pages that talk about the Lane versus Seattle and the impact on, on our utility as well. And, and just as a contra to that, there are some communities that even on their water bill and they're the purveyor of their of their own water, they itemize on the bill what the utility tax is. <coughs> if you increase that tax, it would change the bill. It would go up. So they'd actually be backing their rate down. Or so they'd go up in their tax, down in their rate, the bill would stay the same. Because we do it at the macro level, you just take it off the utility at the end and it doesn't have to, it doesn't change the bill. All right, so the next slide um, we put together, and this is comparing our rates to other areas in the community. Um, you can see Vancouver's the lowest and they have economies of scale being uh, a larger city. Uh, our existing rates are the second lowest and then our rates as we're proposing to increase them are, are still right there lowest uh, other than Vancouver. And what this is based on, uh, because not every city has the same structure, uh, meaning some cities charge a flat fee for water, some charge a, a base fee plus usage, um, not every city bills exactly the same way. So what FCS did is they based this on usage of 20 CCF, and Jim, you'll have to uh, help me here because I am not quite sure what CCF stands for, uh, for water and 14 CCF for sewer where applicable. So if they had a usage rate, that was the base, or the, the usage that we used to try to compare across board between like cities in the area. One other thing to note, um, you may recall that in the uh, presentation from October 11th, <clears throat> the updated copy of which was in your packets, this slide also exists. It's a little bit different. We've updated it because we learned